Good afternoon, everybody. This is Hunter Mazingo bringing you your daily market insight video for Thursday, July 22nd. It is a little bit later than normal, roughly an hour and 10 minutes or so after the close here in Jacksonville, Florida, approximately 5.13 p.m. Eastern time here today. And we're going to talk about how identifying relative strength can lead to bigger gains. And in particular, identifying that relative strength early on uh, as a move is really just beginning. And we're going to review some recent trades uh, that kind of highlight that to a certain extent, um, as well as just some recent trades in general that we've made over the last few days. Uh, but before we get into that stuff, we're going to go over what just happened today, and that is growth leaders outpacing the indices for the day. And we're going to look at some of those winners uh, that are showing some nice relative strength today while the markets are kind of flat here in just a little bit. But first, the performance for the day, you've got the S&P up 0.2 percent, the Q's up about two thirds of a percent, and the Dow's just slightly above flat 0.0 percent up for the day. Mid caps down around 1% and the Russell down around one and a half. So small and mid caps really struggling. Uh, and really we saw banks and oil struggle today. So uh, a big drag on those indices. Market state remains the same, that is bifurcation. And for those of you that the definition of bifurcation is something that's split into two parts or three parts, something that's divided. And right now the Qs are acting very strong, but small and mid caps have been acting very weak. Uh, so a little bit of a divided market. The Q's obviously the leaders, small and mid caps, the laggards, S&P and Dow kind of stuck in the middle there. The trend gauge also remains the same. Uh, going back to Don's video on Tuesday, market leaders remains bullish. Short term and mid term are still neutral, pointing towards bullish, uh, but not moved back to bullish yesterday as small and mid caps are failing at those short and mid term moving averages. And long term, all major indices are still above the 200. Uh, day moving average as well. So before we get to the charts, this is the team at Revere. Uh, if you have any comments, questions about anything I cover in the video, please send me an email, hunter at revereasset.com. If you're interested in Revere strategy, becoming a client, any of that stuff, you can reach out to any of these fellows here, Dan, Tim, Alex, or Don at revereasset.com. If a strategy that participates in the upside by finding leading stocks and minimizes the downside, is interesting to you, like I said, please reach out to any of these people here, uh, any of these emails, if you have any questions or comments. So let's get to the charts here. Like I said, the S&P kind of stuck in the middle and the Dow, they've, they've had a really nice bounce, more so the S&P, um, about 1% above the 21 EMA, about 2.5% above the 50, so not crazy extended by any means. Uh, nice bounce off the 50 effort undercut here the last four days, and now sitting back above the 8, the 21, and the 50 as it should in an uptrending market. The Qs, obviously a bit more extended, didn't get to the 50, reclaimed the 21, and now we have gotten back to almost 6% above the 50-day moving average, so just getting right back extended again, uh, but a really nice close. At the top of the range today, we've closed really close to the top of the range the last four days, indicative of some of the strength we've seen uh, this week in the market, particularly in the NASDAQ. Like I said, the Dow, a little bit of a laggard. It is above those key moving averages, above the 8, above the 21, above the 50, uh, but a little bit closer to those and not necessarily pushing out at getting very close to all-time highs like the NASDAQ is. Um, per se, but acting okay. And then you've got your two lagging areas here, small and mid. So this is your small caps getting rejected at the declining 21 EMA. You'd like to see for the health of the overall market and the continuation of the trend, you'd like to see this able to get above the 21 and ideally able to get back above the 50 and mid caps. It's going to be the same story. Um, really dragged down by banks and oils. Uh, like I mentioned, we're going to look at those charts at the end of the video, uh, but rejected at the 21, um, not really able to stay above it. So small and mid caps being the inhibitor to us adjusting the trend gauge back to bullish. Uh, so we'll see if they can get back above the 21, above the 50 um, in order to make those changes. But I also want to highlight TLT and TNX today. You can see TLT bounced off the 21 really nicely after it got pretty extended here. So you've got a big move in bond prices over the last two days where it's closed at the top of the range here after it got down and then 
up 1% today, which conversely, you've got a, a pullback in yields as well. So you can see yields down here right at this 200 day. And then you've also got banks not really acting the best uh, today as well. So KRE, a laggard down 2%, KBE, same thing. Still struggling with this declining eight day exponential moving average. Uh, but I just wanted to highlight that as obviously bond prices were up, yields were down, and Qs were the leader today. So still some correlation there uh, as growth outperformed on a day where bond prices were up and yields were down. So let's go to some recent trades. So today we actually added back to CrowdStrike. There was some nice volume on this one early this morning. Uh, and so we added back pretty much what we sold. This was a 6% position. We cut back half of it when it pulled back here in this range and broke the eight day, added back that exposure today as it showed some really nice strength. It kind of been lulling everybody to sleep, lagging a little bit, but today it really had some move to it. So we added back to that. We also bought back some NVIDIA as it reclaimed the 21 and the eight yesterday, right around this 192 level. Uh, so we had sold our position entirely there after a really nice run when it undercut the 21 and the eight, as you can see here, got back in as it reclaimed it uh, and some strong action for NVIDIA today. Some other leaders uh, today that outperformed the indices, keep in mind the S&P was pretty much flat up 0.2%. Shopify up 1.6, uh, that's a new all-time closing high and just new all-time price high for Shopify, over 1,600. Got Amazon back up to nearly 36.50, 36.38. Uh, really strong move here for Amazon after it came down undercut the 21, retested 3,500, now right back on its way ahead of earnings like a lot of these are. Uh, Lulu, and I should note, uh, Lulu is a position in our portfolio. It's one of our biggest positions, very strong today. You can see the volume patterns uh, going all the way back to here as it got through this 200 day moving average. Lulu continuing to act great uh, for one of the leading retail stocks at the current time. It had been a laggard, but acting great now. Dynatrace, another position uh, in Grotection, just not very far off all time highs here to 62 levels, pretty important. And you can see it's not far from pushing through this area here, right around 63. DocuSign. Now this is gonna be the example of what I talk about, finding relative strength early. So we did the same thing here that I mentioned with Crowd. We had sold uh, half the position. It was over a 6% position. It was now down closer to around a 3% position. Uh, but Docu was really one of the first to show strength out of all of the, uh, excuse me, out, out of the growth stocks when things were really not looking great. So you can see this is Docu on 720. And this is the day we added as it pushed through this high of about 284, 283, and really cleared the eight day and started to move higher. And you can see there's been, there had been some volume on it. Uh, on the 15th as well, when it bounced and reclaimed the 21 EMA. So we noticed that, but you got to look. So here's QQQ on 720, below the 21 EMA uh, right here this day, 720 or 719, excuse me. And granted, it closed at the top of the range, but what we noticed early in the morning was DocuSign was acting much better. It was green earlier on 719. Uh, and as the market started to come back, it was obvious that DocuSign was really one of the leading stocks. So we added back to this position. We uh, doubled up from what we had brought it down to after taking some profits. And this has continued to uh, outperform as the market has bounced. You can see it was up nearly 3% on the day we added, ran through the 300 high uh, the day after on 720 up 4% up again yesterday and up another 2% today. So really strong action in one of those names where you identify strength a little bit early as it was starting to show signs of life before some other areas of the market and that strength has continued. And similar story, Net did, did something pretty similar. So we added to Net on 720, same thing, had brought it back to around a 3% position after trimming some for some profits. 
added back another 3% to the position on 720 as it pushed through this high of 106 uh, and also reclaimed the eight again. Um, this was a day where it had a downgrade and ended up acting, undercutting the 21 again and acting very strong that day. Followed that up with two days closing very close to the top of the range and making new all time highs. So just two examples here of trades we made where stocks were showing relative strength a little bit early so showing signs that they were possibly ready to lead if things did, did bounce and these stocks have outperformed over the last few days uh, as the market has bounced. So just two examples of when you see that relative strength early on of how that can ultimately lead to outperformance in the near term or even the intermediate term, uh, depending on how long this, this bounce route, uh, continues in, in the NASDAQ, particularly in the S&P. A couple of other earnings gaps to run through real quick, Chipotle, making a higher high today, up another 2.5% after a monster gap up yesterday on earnings, uh, up 11.5% yesterday, 25 today. DPZ, Domino's Pizza, massive move, up 15% on earnings. Uh, numbers not quite as impressive as Chipotle's, but still the price action is absolutely phenomenal. And lastly, uh, Crocs also had a big, uh, big reaction to earnings. They were up almost 15% or so at one point, finished the day up 10%, but big volume. Always good to see really strong gap ups, uh, especially outside of technology. I mean, these are, you know, a, a food company, two food companies and a, a shoe company, uh, but with big, big volume, strong moves and holding that move pretty well, not failing uh, at least at this point. So a couple of areas that are weak, I highlighted that banks were weak uh, with yields falling today. Uh, you've also had oil and gas week. Here's XOP down 2%. Same story, struggling with this declining eight-day exponential moving average overhead. And really, you can throw a dart at any of the oil stocks, but they're going to look pretty similar. Here's FANG. Here's CPE. Here's Matador. Uh, none of these really looking too great at the moment. And you also had China stocks struggling a little bit today as some of the there was a bad announcement with Didi and they might face extreme uh, punishments for their actions as a possible uh, delisting, all kinds of stuff. So Neo, a, a weak growth stock today, down one and a half percent. Some of the China stocks struggling. You also had XLI as a laggard today, not weak. It had made a pretty vicious bounce, uh, but a laggard down 0.4% on a day where the S&P was green. NTLA. This is a, a company that just recently had some positive developments with gene editing therapy trial. Uh, came back to the 21, bounced nicely, and a pull back today down 3.2% light volume uh, as it got back to this 150 level, but holding on above the eight. And last few here, this is a position in protection, a little bit of a, a slow one today. It had outperformed over the last three days, however in mode down two percent today and one area that's shaping up a little bit better than some of the other areas like oil and uh the value type plays is home builders you can see the etf it's uh, broke the 21 and the eight again today but was ultimately able to reclaim it and you're seeing a little bit of strength in some names like lennar back above the moving averages dhi just reported and we saw a close at the top of the range back above the 21 and the 8 for DHI. So keep an eye on this home builder space. It's still not performing the best, but we're seeing some signs of, of life or some positive traction uh, start to take hold maybe here in home builders. And lastly, one trade we made was selling UNH. Uh, we bought this on the positive reversal on earnings, which is going to be 715. And Bought it really right in the middle of the range right here, right around 415, 416. And it just uh, has not done anything while the market and growth leaders continued higher. So Don and the team, we made the decision to just take a, a very minimal loss, only about 0.2% on the actual position. So an actually negligible impact to the portfolio. Nothing wrong with it per se. You can see it was above the 21 and above the 8, but really no follow through, no volume. Um, and lagging some other uh, other leaders in the market. So we made the decision to just cut it uh, and move on. So 
that's going to wrap it up for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the content. As always, send me an email if you have any questions about what I went over, uh, any stocks, uh, any of the concepts, anything like that. I'd be happy to answer. So uh, thank you all and enjoy your weekend.